Okay, so this is the thigh, and I have the luminary motor, I have the aluminum flat bar that forces the the aluminum away from the flux coil, and the luminary solenoid motor. This will allow it to actually to lift upward when my body is fixed in a vertical cool position, um, as opposed to horizontal. In horizontal, it can move backwards or forward, backwards or forward. In a horizontal movement by the rod trying to escape, which will move the entire initial mass, where the mass of the coil is greater than the mass of the element which is being lifted or actuated. The weight of this aluminum bar is less than the weight of the mass, which causes uh, it to lift it or move it, and uh, how can I say it? Uh, away drag force, uh, drag force, um, the uh, inertial mass. So even though this will escape from the aluminum, and this aluminum is less than the inertial mass. So therefore, it will also lift it into the air. Now I have a flux coil here, which is a 24 gauge. I have also uh, a 25 gauge, and I have a 24 gauge here, copper wire. This is about over 500 turns, and I have 500 turns here, and I have another 300 turns here, about 300 to 350 turns here, and about 200 turns here. So there's one, two, three, four. Now I have to add another flux, which is going to be central around here in this diameter. Now I put it onto this metal frame. Just fix it onto this metal frame in a temporary setting. Then I'm going to remove it all. First, I have to add the coil radius of this metric range right here to add the flux wire. Uh, basically, I'm probably going to put it on top of it or local to the central edge right here of the hole. Now, in the bottom one, bottom coil, I'm going to do the same. So that will make one, two, three, four. So four coils and four fluxes. And while in between here, it has a linear flux. Now, obviously, this is curved around to the metric range. This loops over, so it won't touch the area. This is half 50% of the side of the other part. So this is the frontal part and not the back part. Now, the frontal part, obviously, the enclosures will be enclosed with copper, copper sheet, where the aluminum is in, in vector being phased by the by not only by the synchronous energy of the electrodynamics, but also DC, this is being phased by a DC current, which will also increase the paramagnetic vector field. So as the cop as the copper sheet that is within the vector field shall be phased with a synchronous energy. However, the copper sheet, in addition to that, shall also be phased with a DC. So both shall give off an electrodynamic radiation. And these the radiation pressure shall be equal to the same. So that the force will be greater and immediate uh, reaction and would have, have to build up momentum of synchronization for the electrons or atomic uh, calculation to increase uh, voltage or capacitance within the element atomic um uh here of the element the element. So therefore Using the flux lever and doing the turns, this will it will be able to lift this part of my the mass into into the into the air. However, even though this motor is more turns than any coil you actually motor you ever seen. Um that if, uh, motor you ever seen that is even this type of coils turns are more likely for construction or high industrial robot robots, not even high industrial uh, robots like trucks and stuff like that, pickup trucks and uh, industrial uh, vehicles, but not for like you can find these different conventional robots in as to actually to move it's very, very, very strong. Now However, this is only just a fraction of the, the following that couples behind. And even though these parts or segments are uh, synchronous to each additional part is of the kneecap that you go where this bearing should be is going to be attached to the kneecap to shift up and down. This will enable the shift this sliding point. However, these all will be enclosed in carbon fiber. So my name is Ray Morton. I'll be back. And I'm going to hit the flux wire now. Goodbye.